not to our major discussion of this issue. President Buhari has offered an assurance that the federal government is prepared to collaborate with the South African government to find a lasting solution to the involvement of a few Nigerians in criminal activities in, the, in that country. This is one of the key issues arising as he, excuse me, as he received the report of a special envoy to South Africa, Ambassador Hamed Rufai, who has returned from the assignment to address violent attacks against Nigerians. A statement from the special, uh, President's Special Advisory Media and Publicity, Mr. Femi Adichina, says the President has also given instructions for the immediate voluntary evacuation of all Nigerians who are willing to return home. President Buhari further instructed the Foreign Affairs Minister to continue to engage with appropriate authorities on the concrete measures the South African government is expected to take. In the wake of these xenophobia attacks by South Africans against foreigners, including Nigerians, the President has sent Ambassador Rufai to convey a special message to his South African counterpart, President Siri Ramaphosa. The issues raised in President Buhari's message include uh, his deep concern about intermittent violence against Nigerians and their property and business interests in South Africa. He also expressed worries that the recurring issue of xenophobia could negatively affect the image and standing of South Africa as one of the leading countries on the continent. The president also stressed the need for the South African government to take visible measures to stop violence against citizens of brotherly African nations. Let's get some perspective on this one and perhaps now uh, this developing story we've been following for you and the latest decision and the reaction from uh, the government. Let's uh, join a uh, professor of international law and juris jurisprudence, Professor Akin Yobode, who joins us uh, from the uh, Lekki area of Lagos and from our Abuja studio is the chair of the Diaspora Commission, Mrs. Abike Dabiri Erewa. Thank you so much for coming, uh, both of you tonight. Professor, let me get your uh, reaction to uh, what the president has said and what the report, uh, the envoy has uh, given to the president. What's your reaction to what the federal government has come out with? Well, I believe uh, that the president is playing the statesman. Uh, he does not want to descend to the level of the South Africans uh, by invoking uh, his prestige uh, to ensure that there is what we call pacific settlement of the dispute. Uh, the rate at things uh, were going uh, in the last week was such that uh, it's gave the impression that the worst was yet to happen. But I think uh, President Buhari has thrown a dampener on the whole issue in order to allow for proper negotiations so that uh, the relationship between Nigeria and South Africa uh, would not be hampered because of the recriminations uh, on both sides. How would you uh, rate the, these very response, the immediate response of the, of the government, compared to the stance of the government and perhaps the reaction of Nigerians when this situation uh, escalated last week? Because a lot of Nigerians were saying that the Nigerian government needs to be stern and needs to be uh, very, very uh, firm with the South African people or South African government on the attacks on Nigerians in South Africa. Would you say that this has met expectations of Nigerians? Uh, not really. But you see, you have to agree that the relationship between Nigeria and South Africa is asymmetrical. Uh, Nigerians are there in South Africa, but you don't have uh, the same high number of South Africans in Nigeria. Uh, so we have a lot of investment, South African investment in Nigeria, but we don't have the South Africans uh, against whom uh, the ordinary Nigerians, that is the mob, uh, could vent their anger. Uh, that is why I believe the Buhari government uh, is trying to be very diplomatic even though we are the aggrieved party. 
quite a number of my friends have said that uh, Nigeria should not give the impression that it was begging South Africa for some consideration because we are the injured party. It is the South Africans that ought to send uh, their delegations here to appeal uh, to Nigerians not to visit uh, mayhem on uh, the South Africans or their interests. But as things were, as I said, uh, Nigeria is playing the role of big brother. And because of that, uh, Nigeria seems to be bending over backwards uh, to accommodate the South Africans. And not very many Nigerians are happy uh, with the attitude of Nigeria because it shows us as weak need, as uh, not decisive enough. And of course, uh, because we have uh, so many weapons in our arsenal, uh, to quote Jeff Onyama, uh, we should not uh, exhaust all the weapons that we could use. So the relationship or the response of Nigeria to South Africa needs to be very well calibrated. That is my hunch of what has happened. Let, let's bring uh, Mrs. Zabika W. Arawa into the conversation. I remember vividly that there are about three points that the federal government and the meeting where the vice president, the minister of foreign affairs, was with the president last week before the envoy left for South Africa. Uh, it included compensation. Uh, what can you tell us about the Nigerians that are in dire need after that attack? What is the welfare, the state of some of the Nigerians in South Africa as we speak? Um, sorry, I didn't get the early part of your question. You were off. So can you just um, repeat the question? Okay, I mean, what I, my question is that can you tell us the state of the welfare of Nigerians who are perhaps stranded? How many of them and how many of them are there that are ready for the immediate evacuation the president was talking about? Well, as at um, this evening, 640 Nigerians have registered to come back home voluntarily. So that means about two planes will be there to bring them back. And more are still coming to register. So I'm sure by that time and now, maybe more are uh, coming to register. So yes, as I said, 640 will be home voluntarily um, from Wednesday. Uh, hopefully, no hitches about that. And one thing about it is that they are actually upbeat about coming home. They are excited. In fact, there's a case of some women who, okay. when they got to the High Commission, got to know it was postponed. They left their backs there and said, we're, we're not living here. We just want to go back home. And it's like, why should we come here, say we're looking for money, and then we can't sleep with our eyes closed. So they're all bit about coming home. And as the president has instructed that every Nigerian who wants to come home voluntarily will be brought back. So they are registering okay. at the mission. So, uh, sorry, Mrs. Uh, Arawa, let, or... me, let me pause it for a moment. Uh, we're going to be asking you about the issue of compensation and the plans of Nigerians for those who are coming home. But we take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk more about it, the South African issue and what Nigerians, uh, the Nigerian government is doing and the welfare of Nigerians who are stranded. Join us again, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for staying with us. It's something that has got a lot of Nigerians talking, especially when they saw pictures of how some of their brothers and sisters were humiliated and properties got burned and the attacks in South Africa. We're hearing that hundreds and several Nigerians are ready to come home after the president had said uh, he has instructed the immediate voluntary evacuation of Nigerians from South Africa. The response of the federal government and the situation at Anne Kessel talking tonight on the program. Professor of International Law and Jurisprudence, Professor Akio Yebode, has been speaking with us on the program, and also Ms. Abika Dabirirewa. She is the chair of the uh, Nigerians Diaspora Commission. Thank you so much for talking to us. Let me come back to you, um, uh, Madam. Uh, uh, as it stands right now, uh, there were some instructions or there were some agreements made by the Nigerian federal government at a meeting with the vice president and the minister of foreign affairs before the envoy left for South Africa. It included compensation. We've not heard anything about that uh, in that report and the response of the president. Is that out of the, uh, the cards on the table now? 
Well, um, as you know, the president has said the Minister of Foreign Affairs will continue engagements with the relevant authorities in South Africa. And I'm sure that will be part of the minister's engagement with the authorities in South Africa. So definitely it's still on the table. But as you heard there, the engagements will continue with um, the, the Minister of Foreign Affairs in South Africa, as well as the Minister of Foreign Affairs, uh, our own Minister of Foreign Affairs. And to your question as to what happens when you do return to Nigeria, well, well, they will be captured, there will be offers. On the part of the federal government, there are social investment programs like the JEEP program. If they're interested, we'll ask them to enroll and then work with the Bank of Industries for those who want to have uh, small-scale businesses. So that is there on the part of government. And then we're also working with some individuals and NGOs who says, well, Let's see when they come back. We may be able to support with some kind of training or the other. So when they do come back, we'll receive them and then put these options um, ahead of them and we take it from there. And of course, they all come from states. So state governors will also know the number of their citizens that are coming back. But I think the key thing is, as the president said, the welfare and the life of every Nigerian matters. So first thing is just come back home safely. And as one of them said, where you're running away from, that is Nigeria, is much better than where you're running to. So we expect them back safe and sound, and uh, it's safer to be back in your country and to, to you know, be at ease in your country. Uh, and, Sarah, and we also hope that the South African government will show the political will, as the president said, to deal with these matters. Now, for months now, We've had eight policemen being, um, in fact, eight po policemen have been charged to court by South Africa. They've been charged for cases involving maltreatment of Nigerians in South Africa. It's been on for a long time, but the cases have not ended. So we're hoping those cases will end. There has to be consequences for actions. Four policemen have been arrested in connection with the last death of the gentleman that was killed in his home. So we're saying that let these investigations heard end and let us know what happened. Mrs. Elizabeth Chuku, they told us they're investigating. It's been handled by Brigadier General, and they are assuring that indeed these investigations will end. So we demand an end to those investigations so that we know what exactly is happening, and there should be consequences for actions. But key thing, as President has instructed, is that the lives of every Nigerian matters. We want them home safe and sound. And um, again, Nigerians have been advised in, in some areas, if you have shops there, it might not be safe to open shops at a certain point in time. So keep your shops locked up until you're sure of, of the environment. And also Nigerians have been told to just be law abiding. Don't take laws into your hands. And, All right. Um, M and Mrs. Sarawak, let me quickly put this in. Uh, if, I, if I may quickly put this in, how would you react to some of Nigerians who, are, who say they are disappointed in the latest reaction of the federal government, who thought some of them who applauded the federal government before the envoy left in the firm manner the federal government reacted to what is happening in South Africa. Some of them who said they wanted perhaps a firmer uh, reaction from the federal government, perhaps taking a more st uh, stronger stance diplomatically against South Africa on these attacks. The Minister of Foreign Affairs will continue those engagements, as, as, as uh, even Professor Akio Yebo said there. He will continue those engagements with his counterpart in South Africa. And what we're saying, South Africa must demonstrate the political will to solve this problem. And I think subsequently, the AU will have to intervene. Because it's not just about Nigeria. Two Bangladeshi nationals were killed. I think yesterday too. So it's not about just Nigeria. AU has to intervene. And I'm sure South Africa finds this also embarrassing. So for those who say they are disappointed, don't be disappointed. The first thing is that the Nigerians are coming back. Let's receive them safe and sound. We don't want any more Nigerians being killed in South Africa. And the government has, you know, given that assurance. So let's receive them home safe and sound. And as the president said, any Nigerian who wants to come back, you will be brought back. So, uh, as uh, the minister said, a lot of diplomacy is involved. He will continue engagement with South African authorities. And like he even said, there are many arsenals. You don't throw them all out at the same time. But we expect South Africa to show the political will to ensure that this comes to an end. All it's right. embarrassing that at this stage in Africa, we have blacks killing blacks. That's not what we should be doing. It should be about collaboration. It should be about developing the African continent. It should be about you know, pushing the African continent forward, not blacks killing blacks. OK, let me quickly uh, get back to Professor Oyebode. Uh, uh, Professor Oyebode, 
your experience in international law and uh, diplomacy is uh, of so many years. With what is happening, a lot of some of your colleagues uh, in the diplomatic community are saying that whatever decision Nigeria makes against South Africa would send a note of warning or would send a strong message about the nation's uh, love for its own people uh, in some other part of the world. Uh, on a final note, Professor, what would you say that Nigeria might be looking towards alternatively or other cards on the table that could send these diplomatic uh, strong warnings around the world? Well, I believe that Nigeria uh, has to insist on payment of compensation some form of reparations because in international law once a duty has been uh, violated there's an obligation uh, to remedy that injury and south africa owes a duty to foreigners especially fellow africans domiciled in south africa to accord them an international minimum standard of treatment uh, if we don't have uh, what you call uh, a most favored nation relationship, at least something close to a national treatment standard should be accorded to the extent that the South African government is unable or unwilling okay, to guarantee uh, a minimum standard of treatment to foreigners, especially Africans living there. To that extent, South Africa owes a duty in international law to uh, pay compensation for the injury that Nigerians had suffered. Now, Nigeria has a freedom of choice of uh, forum, either to go to uh, the African Court on Human and People's Rights in Arusha, or to go to uh, the International Court of Justice in The Hague, or the International Criminal Court uh, at The Hague. Uh, in terms of establishing uh, the obligation of South Africa. I know some people might say that might be too severe, but then the South Africans can't treat us uh, with askance. We have to assert our will and ensure that such is not repeated in any other country. All right. Professor, I must sincerely thank you uh, for your time on the program. Uh, Mrs. Abika, you need to help me in 10 seconds, your final word. 10 seconds, please. Mm -hmm. Well, the issue of compensation is on the table. Nigeria will demand compensation. Killing of our people is criminal. It's a criminal offense. And we will demand compensation and reparation, as Prof said, for them. And then if you say... Nigeria, some Nigerians are, are into drugs. Arrest them. There are Nigerians that are in South African prisons for one offense or the other, you know, and they are paying the penalty for it. Right. If you say some Nigerians are doing drugs, they are in your society. Arrest them. Let us know who they are. We're going to name and shame them. Arrest them and deal with them, but do not generalize or criminalize all, right. all Nigerians in South Africa. We, we have to, many we Nigerians need to leave it working that because we are professionals out of time. developing the South African economy. So we definitely will demand justice for our citizens in South Africa. Africa. Thank you so much, Mrs. Da Abike Dabirirewa, the chair of the Diaspora Commission, and Professor Akin Yebo, the professor of international law and jurisprudence. Thank you so much for your thoughts tonight on the program. Well, that's our show for tonight, everyone. Many thanks for watching. I'm sure Akimale. Bye-bye.